God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. I'm going to read to you something that happened about 2,000 years ago, and it's based upon what God has done for you and your sins. I'm reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, a historical fact that Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. And Pilate therefore went forth again, says unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. No man can find any fault. No man can find any sin in the Lord Jesus Christ, for the Lord Jesus Christ is God, and God is Jesus Christ. And yet, he stood before the Roman government, he stood there as a sacrificial lamb for your sins. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. At this point in time in Jewish history is a day and event of a celebration for the Jews called the Passover. The Passover when they came out of the land of Egypt as they journeyed to the homeland. And Paul therefore went forth again and says unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you that ye may know that I find no fault in him. And then Jesus then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns, the purple robe. And Pilate said unto him, Behold the man. Neither is there salvation any other but the man, the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. The man. Jesus wasn't a wimp. Jesus was a man declared by the Roman government. He was beaten. He, had, he took abusement for your sins. And he stands here uncondemned. If you were to stand before any judge today, and in your life you had violated the law somewhere, and if you have not, you think you're perfect, you have violated. God said to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. If you do not believe the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are not saved. You are not saved. When the chief priests, therefore, and the officers said, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Paul said unto him, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. As much as you hate the Bible being preached to you week after week, I tell you, they did not want Jesus Christ to preach the gospel to them day after day. You only get it weekly. With Jesus, it was daily. They wanted to get rid of him. They wanted to crucify him. And I guarantee you, some of you here want to do the same thing to me. And Jesus said, marvel not the world hates you. Know that the world has hated you first. The world, the world has hated me first, as it will hate you. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And the Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. He didn't make himself the Son of God. God made him the Son of God. God conceived him. God made him. And he is of God and is God. When Pilate therefore heard these sayings, he was more the more afraid. And went again into the judgment hall, and says unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. There may be a time in your life you may declare who Jesus is and have no action. And then that one day, Jesus, give me an answer. And he may be to your silence. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is the time. It's not tomorrow. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Later on this afternoon is not guaranteed. A minute is not guaranteed. All the crime that comes to be that you read about in the papers, some idiot may come with a gun and take our lives today, and you'll be going off in eternity, some of you into hell, some of us into heaven. It can be that quick. Death happens every
every day. Death has taken hold this morning, many, into captivity which you cannot come out of. And then said Paul unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? And Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except they were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivers me unto thee has the greater sin. That's the religious group. It was the religious people of Jesus' time that brought Jesus to the, the Roman government and realized religion cannot save you. Religion is against God. These chief priests, these Pharisees, these Sadducees were the religions of our times today and they are against God. And Jesus said they have the greater sin for bringing Jesus into condemnation rather coming to Jesus with their condemnation. And from thence, for Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever make himself a king, speak is against Caesar. Now Jesus never made himself a king of the Jews at this time. Jesus didn't come for the kingdom. He came for our souls. He came to go upon Calvary's cross to die for our sins. And yet the people are crying out, we don't want this man. And you may say, oh, I'll go back in time, go see Jesus. I will want to see that time. And you will stand in this time and say, crucify him, as with everybody else who cried, crucify him. That only one of his twelve disciples was with him there at the cross. Only one. Where were the eleven? One denied him. The nature of man is you don't want God. You don't want to have nothing to do with God. And the government of the time declares to you in a historical document that that man was innocent. Declared three, four times by two Roman officials, leaders of the country, that says there is no fault in the Lord Jesus Christ. What are you going to do when you stand in judgment before God one day? That's not the answer, Greek Orthodox. The Lord Jesus Christ is the answer. When Bob therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in judgment seat and placed in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabasa. Now let me tell you something. Pilate sits down in the judgment seat, but I'm here to tell you one day Jesus is going to be sitting in the judgment seat, and Pilate's going to be looking at him from the other side of judgment. As you will stand one day, as Jesus Christ is seated on his throne, you being judged either in the judgment seat of Christ, or Lord forbid the great white throne judgment. It's pointing out to man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. We are reading about the judge of all the earth, the righteous judge, God the judge. We are reading about him being judged by humans so he can die for our sins. This has all happened, the humbling of God to be judged by man. And yet today, God is frequently judged by man. Ah, uh, he's a teacher. Ah, uh, he's just a nobody. I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in God. You're judging. And then you'll come up to me in times that judge not least ye be judged. You don't know the Bible. But realize at that moment, judge not least ye be judged. You are judging God. As Pilate has judged Jesus. What you need to judge Jesus as, He is the Holy One. He is God. And you need to come to Him, and you need to have your sins judged. You need to bring your sins to the judge, and put them under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the sacrifice that He has done for you and me. And it was the preparation of the Passover, about the sixth hour. And He said unto the Jews, Behold, your King, capital K. Now this is going to be the king of kings that's coming back. And he's not coming.
coming back as a baby in a manger. He's not coming back to kneel down before the Roman governor and the judgment seat. I believe he kneeled down. He, ha he has recorded his word. You are to obey the powers that be. You are to give them reverence because he ordained them. But to realize that Jesus Christ is coming back as a King of kings and Lord of lords, he's coming back as a ferocious lion of God of the tribe of Judah. To have wrath on all those who are disobedient to God and to him. But this is the first coming. This is the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. This is the one who has come to go to Calvary. This purpose in Jesus' life that is happening now has been set for eternities and eons that we cannot even measure. This was set for in that little manger in Bethlehem that Jesus was purposed on a Pacific day, on a Pacific time, to die for your sins. He knew when he was going to die, and he knew the exact second, as we do not. And he has gone forth, he has gone to, and he is here at this time, not calling upon a lawyer, not seeking justice, just taking the rulership, taking the abuse, Isaiah 53, that he may go to that cross and die and shed his blood for my sins. But they had cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. That's exactly what you're doing today. You're maybe not yelling, crucify him. You're saying, get out of here, preacher. Shut up, preacher. We don't want you, preacher. Yet the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. As Christ obeyed the Father, I am obeying the Father and doing what we are told to do, as Christ was told to do, for the payment, for the penalty that we need to be sought that God, the Lord Jesus Christ. There is one mediator between man, the man Christ Jesus. And they cried out, crucify him. Pilate said, I'm, should I crucify your king? If you're a Jewish person here, let me tell you who Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is your Messiah. He is your Savior. And they knew it. You don't. You have been taught lies by your synagogues, by your rabbis. You have been taught wrong by man and Satan on who Jesus Christ really is. Who cares, the Bible says, you're of Abraham. That is of no consequence when it comes to what Jesus Christ has done. The chief priests, that's the religious people. That's the religion. That's the Greek Orthodox. Off your marbles, you call them. Greek off your marbles. Have no idea who God is and what God is. We have no king but Caesar. That's an interesting statement. We have no God but Caesar. Hey, IRS, give me the tax write-off for our church. Hey, Mr. President, make it legal for us to have a church. Quit the persecution. Put down a piece of paper that we can do whatever we want to do without fire persecution. Now, living without persecution is okay, but the church has been dead. When persecution rose out in the book of Acts, people were grown to the church. People got saved. They saw the love that the Christians had for Jesus Christ. They came to believe the Lord Jesus Christ. We come today in relaxing and in, 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 in just nonsense of the church because we can do whatever we want to do. We can say whatever we want to say. We have a piece of paper provides us rights, and the church is dead, and we got modern Bibles, and we got fellowship behind pulpits, we got women preachers, we got radio and TV ministries that are doing God no justice, but we want Caesar. You ought to want 
God. We got men that are running for this country, for the top leadership in the White House today. You ought to be seeking God first, then the rulership of this country. You need to put God back in this country. You need to put God back in the schools. You need to put God back in the courtrooms. You need to bring a Bible to school and not to prison. And I know that for a fact. But we want Caesar. Or a church will promote, go vote for this guy rather than receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's not an either or thing. We'll have no king but Caesar. Christ, you go to hell. Then delivered him, therefore unto him, to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. You know, a lot of you will take Jesus and lead him away. You will tell him, get out of my life. You will tell him, I want to have nothing to do with you. You will tell him, my religion's okay, thank you very much, you'll get me by. You will tell him, that guy up there with the Bible's an idiot, I should not listen to him. Satan has all kinds of excuses for you. Just put him in a hat, blindfold your eyes, and pick one out. It'd be good for Satan. It'll be eternal damnation for your soul. <clears throat> Bearing his cross, went forth unto a place called the Skull. <coughs> On the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew, hey, I know Hebrew, Gagatha. Do you want to know what I see around me all the time? After just having Bikers Week, 2015 Daytona Beach EIA. The symbol today is a skull. As a matter of fact, a couple days ago, you probably dressed your child up as a skull or you went as a skeleton. The place where Jesus Christ hung upon the cross is like it. It's called a skull. Death. There's no brain in this skull. And the Creator hung upon this mountain, this hill, on a cross after He carried it for you. I see in windows, R.I.P., in memory of, America's more into death than she is in life with the Lord Jesus Christ. You're more, more worried about one that has passed on, that has died, than you are about your own soul. And I'm here to tell you that your God, your Savior, is above death when He died upon that tree that you may have life. Why do you think that these druggies, why do you think these religions has a cross, uh, has a skull with a candle inside? Because the light of the world has died upon the skull of death for you. Life comes from death. The death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they crucified him, they and two others with him, on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title, and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Pilate knew who he was. Pilate knew Jesus. And died in his sins according to history. You may know who Jesus is, except you have believed and put your faith in his finished work. You can know everything about Jesus and still die and go to hell. <laughs> 
knowledge, but do you have the faith? A man who knew Jesus, who sat in front of Jesus, died and went to hell with his sins. Know Jesus historically all you want, but get to know him as your Savior. And in religions, as the Greek oddballs, you can know about Jesus. You can read all about Jesus. And you may be reading about the wrong Jesus. For Paul says there's another Jesus. There's another spirit. There's another gospel. And yet you do not know God as Jesus Christ. And Jesus is God. You can die in your sins. And this title then read many of the Jews. For the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. Jesus did not die in Jerusalem. So when the Roman Catholic liars, you go over to the holy city and show the place where he died being in the city, that's a lie. He died without the gate. Page turn. And it's written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. And if everyone at this time, the Passover, all the males were required to go to Jerusalem three times a year, this is one of them. Whatever the population of Jerusalem was at that time, both living and visiting, had a personal witness to know Jesus Christ as they witnessed Him being nailed to that cross. It's a historical fact that Jesus lived and that Jesus died. And it's another historical fact by thousands of people who saw the risen Savior and the empty tomb. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Religion tells you it's never finished. Here, have more Jesus to eat. Here, give us more money in the plate. Here, let's have more bazaars. Make more cookies. Be more of a good duty. Here, do this. Here, do that. Here, be this. Here, be that. And Jesus on the cross said, It is finished. That ends religion. Because He is not finished, we're going to see in a minute. When Jesus gave up the ghost, He won victory over death. He won victory over Satan. He won victory over the grave. He won victory over our sins. And let me read on. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said, wait a minute, I thought Jesus was in the tomb. How 
can Jesus speak if he's in the tomb? I have yet to hear, hear a dead pope speak. I don't hear Joseph Smith crying for another wife out of the grave. Mary Beckett Eddie has not called on her phone. Rabbis are not coming to life. But this man, Pilate said, a man, the man, this man, Jesus Christ, has been dead for three days and three nights, and he's walking and he's talking. He's not just a teacher. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, that I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, to my God, to your God. And then when we go to Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, And when they had spoken these things, while they beheld him, he was taken up, and a cloud received them out of their sight. Listen. The testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ is yes. He lived. He was born. And he lived and taught as a teacher in the streets of Jerusalem and Judea and all of Israel. And yes, people hated him. They wanted to get rid of him. They hated him with a passion that they cried at his judgment, crucify him. And yes, Jesus took a cross and carried it up to a hill. And he was nailed to that cross. And he suffered and died on that cross. But that's not the end of the story. If that's the end of the story, then he would have been a good teacher. He would have been a good man. There are many people in graves throughout the world that were good people and good teachers. Yeah, but something happened with this man called Jesus. On the third day, they went to his tomb. The women and the disciples were expecting to see a dead Jesus just as you do in your church, nailed to the cross. If you've been nailed to the cross day after day after day after years after years, you're dead. I see that Jesus on the cross and he ain't moving. I see that Jesus on the cross hanging on a neck. You know, if you tighten that chain a little more, you'll be dead. But see, Jesus is now not on the cross. That's a lie. Yes, he died on the cross, but they took him down. And Joseph of Armenia took the body and buried it in his tomb. Oh, they buried my Savior. Don't you know the world rejoiced? That man is dead. That man is buried. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so the women come to the tomb of Jesus. They got their spices. They're expecting a dead man. Mary, how are we going to roll that stone away? Oh, I don't know. I didn't think about that. You want to get a couple he-men? 
And he had a man like uh, Samson. And he could help us. And we got all the way here. How are we going to move that? Wait a minute. Looky over there, Mary. What? The stone is rolled away already. Do you feel the earth move? The earth is moving under my feet. I think the song says. Yeah. Where are the guards? There's no guards. I don't see nobody in there. Wait a minute. I see two men. It's supposed to be one. And those two men, angels, speak to the women and give the greatest news that outdid religion, that outdid atheism, that outdid whatever you can come up with to get or avoid heaven. Those angels declare, He is not here. He is risen. I serve a risen God. You can too. Go check your post.
the Lord Jesus Christ, the God of the Bible. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved.